Hey everyone, so previously we finished off with the tooltip and toolbar customization. In this video, we're going to be going through one of the core features of the map visual, which is the various base layer customization. Now, as always, within a sample report, you already have your predefined examples and you can play around with them. In this case, we're actually going to be doing something slightly different. Instead of going into the training view and building the samples ourselves, we're going to go through the already pre-built ones. The reason for that is because I'm using some specific variables that I already had predefined prior to this. So the first variation for the base layer itself, we're going to select the map so we can go into the formatting options. There we go, base layer is going to be the option of none. Now, when you think about maps, the first question that might arise is, for example, why would I want to have a map without the actual map? And the answer is actually pretty simple. Instead of using the base layer, you're actually using shape layers to display regions for the countries, for example. In these cases, you're not that interested in, let's say, the specific street that it's located on, but you're more interested in that region itself. So no base layer is great for when you want to focus on the shapes by definition. Now, the settings that you have here are the ones that you're going to be also able to customize for all other base layers. And those are going to be minimum and maximum zoom. So these allow you to define how far away from the map are the end users allowed to zoom out and how far are they allowed to zoom in. The next one is going to be the autofocus. So for the autofocus, we actually have five different modes. We have none, auto, focus once on load, save position, and fixed. So let's start one by one. None means that the chart doesn't have a specific location where it's going to be loaded in. What it's going to do is essentially zoom out to the max level and try just to center the map by itself. The other option is auto. Auto means that whenever you do changes with the data, it's going to follow through with it. And we can see this actually in the custom map example right here. So if I switch to it, you can see that I have factory, houses, power plants, and wind turbines as additional filters. So now when I zoomed in, I have all these points visible. And if I, for example, click on factory and just filter out one particular segment, you can see that I zoomed in on factories. I can do the same thing with the houses or the power plants or turbines. So this allows you to dynamically follow the data and to make sure that your end user never gets truly lost. Now let's go back to the none and let's go back into the formatting options. So if we go into the base layer settings, the last thing that we didn't cover is the max out of focus zoom. What this allows you to do is to define the zoom level to which you're going to initially load in. This is going to be really useful for those cases where, for example, you have just a few data points. And if you have it on a high number, it's going to get closer to the actual point. So it's just something to keep in mind. So like I said, the next option we're going to cover is going to be image. So once we load in the image layer, we can go into the base layer settings and go through the new settings that have appeared. So here we have image URL. You need to provide a direct access to the URL. Just make sure that the visual or the actual image that you're using there is publicly accessible. These links are not going to work for images that are, for example, stored in SharePoint that you have only particular accesses to. Now, the other few settings that we added here are going to be the topmost, the leftmost, bottommost, and rightmost coordinates. So you can understand the boundaries of the image. The added benefit of actually having an image as a background is because you can define the locations through the longitude and latitudes by following these four coordinates for the topmost corners. And then you can actually use the lasso tool to, for example, highlight or draw certain sectors within that image. This is really applicable for those cases where, for example, you have floor plans, warehouse plans, or for example, even a custom map, and you just want to highlight certain aspects of it. Now, the third option that we have here is a custom map. For the custom map, the settings that you have here are actually predefined when you first initially enable the base layer. So if we go into the settings right here, so formatting options, base layer settings, you can see that right here, we also have some new settings. So we have the URL. And in this case, the URL actually means that you need to provide the link to the tile server. The added benefit of this is that you can essentially use any other map provider that's out there or any other map tile that's out there. As long as you have the link to the actual tile, you can use it. You can use Google Maps, CartoDB Maps, OpenStreetMaps, 
or any other map provider out there, like I mentioned. So for example, additional things that you can do here is for specific maps, you will also need to define the subdomains, the API keys, and some attributions. In this case, for example, our attribution is to the OpenStreetMap because we're using their map as our base layer. So that's going to be it for the base layer customization, and I'll see you in the next video.